Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to wrap up today with a special selection which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's special selection comes at us from Sunsteel. It's a rhythmic rap metal song, instrumentally interesting but lyrically wonderful. The band is Caparezza. We're going to be looking at the track Argenti Vive. Let's dive in, see what they're bringing to the table today. Mentre solcavamo l'immobile palute, mi si parò davanti uno spirito coperto di fango. Allungò verso la barca entrambe le mani, ma Virgilio pronto lo respinse dicendogli Via di qui! Vattene a stare con gli altri maledetti! Ed io, maestro, sarei molto, molto desideroso prima di uscire dalla palude di vederlo immergere Just that drone in the background so far? Poco dopo Vidi gli racconti fare di lui un tale scempio che per esso ancora glorifico e ringrazio il Dio. Tutti insieme gridavano A Filippo Argenti! A Filippo Argenti! Very rigid. <laughs> Those little electronic hits. Ciao Dante, ti ricordi di me? Sono Filippo Argenti, il vicino di casa che nella commedia ponesti tra questi violenti. Sono quello che annega nel fango, pestato dai demoni intorno. Cos'è? Vuoi provocarmi, Sammo? Puoi solo provocarmi. So much groove, the rhythmic element of the flow, yeah. I like how the vocal rhythm is driving the intensity more so than the guitars behind them. So the uh, ba 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 two dotted quarter notes followed by a a regular quarter note. We've actually seen that a lot in here as the way to wrap up pretty much every single one of the vocal or sorry the guitar lines. There it is again. Ba ba ba. The synth strings. The hip hop hi hat work. We're kind of digging that in this context. Great use of space, too. Like that part right there, like creating a vacuum and then leaning into it. Giovani venti saranno come l'argenti e la 
and there's our Oh but that's equidistant, that's triplet right there. Lo lasciamo là nella palude. Non vi racconto altro. Yeah, I had a blast with that. It's not a super deep song. So I actually don't know how uh, how long this analysis is going to be, but there's more to it than I would expect, which is pretty cool. Uh, I mean, let's let's stick with the foundation right now. We'll build up from there. Guitars. I don't know if there's a bass in here. If there is, it's just doing the same thing the electric guitars are doing. A lot of this is the same throughout the entire song. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's a change of, well, any change that we get is one of minor alteration rather than, uh, re-envisioning or something brand new entirely. That is to say, there's really only one riff in the track. We get it right at the beginning and that is the most complex. I believe that the riff is from there. We strip it down to just the key points where we have, uh, the strike on the downbeat of bar one and I think down to bar three, and then the ba ba ba, we get that triplet hit at the end of bar four, pulling us back into those two key hits, and with those allowed to just kind of reverberate. We also have uh, rhythmic versions of this where we have just that initial hit, but then we also have um, some syncopated rhythms based around that specific pitch. Um, at the beginning, though, we actually did have some moving pitches. Still a very similar rhythm to what we would hear underneath a lot of the rapping parts, but some moving pitches. So that's one thing. Uh, kind of nice to have that, again, as the most complex version of the riff. Everything from that is a simplification of it in some manner or another. Sometimes we play a lot less. Sometimes we play a little less. Sometimes we focus in on texture rhythm. Sometimes we focus in just on atmosphere, allowing the note to just ring out. Um... There are some sections where we remove that triplet hit at the end entirely and just continue on with these accents every couple of bars. And sometimes where we put a variation of that on there where we get the rhythmic syncopated, the rhythmically syncopated phrase um, every couple of bars to create uh, this cool idea. That phrase actually runs over the bar lines where it doesn't resolve itself every four bars, it resolves itself every eight bars. And that was kind of cool too, because that creates this uh, temporal shift within the song. Again, not by changing too much with the guitar, um, just utilizing a, uh, using a specific section of the, the guitar riff itself and repeating it in an odd way. Um, so they get a lot of mileage out of that opening riff. And like I said, it, Pretty sure it takes up every single bit of the guitar work. I, I believe everything the guitar does can be seen as a variation of that opening riff. Um, and so from a perspective, I suppose the guitars can get a bit repetitive. And I'll be honest, I kind of felt that way uh, further into the song too. Um, I don't think that the guitars are varied enough to consistently be the foundation to the song that they are. And I wish at times they had gone for at least even just a B riff. Something quite a bit different from the A, and if they want to work around variations of that as well, just something to create a little bit of contrast. I know once we take out the final, I don't know, 10 seconds of the song and the opening... 30 seconds, 40 seconds, basically the non-musical parts. It ends up being a bit of a shorter song, but it does feel rather long because of the overuse of that guitar riff. <clears throat> but at the same time, this is also the same complaint I make about a lot of hip-hop music's music. Um, is, you know, a hyper-focus on lyrics and vocals and sort of less attention paid towards um, the instrumental side of things. So maybe it actually works out just fine. And this does a fantastic job of capturing a traditionally hip hop, uh, oriented listener, uh, and, and, you know, lean them into something a bit more metallic. So 
I don't know, maybe it works well for an intended audience. I, I really enjoyed the first half of it, finding all these variations, but by the back half of the song, like I had mentioned, I was hoping for something a little bit different. And I think I would be a lot more negative, harsher on the song if the guitar was it. But it isn't. There is a ton of variation on the electronic side of things. And I tried to point out as many of these as I could. There is a synthesized string that we got on the second chorus, I think, that played a, a slow moving melody. I wouldn't really call it, well, I was going to say I want to call it counterpoint, but I don't think there was any melody going on. So it was our lead melody. <laughs> it wasn't a very strong melody, nothing catchy to it, but it was moving pitches, which is something we don't really get much of in this song. Um, we also have these electronic sounds, uh, a lot of pitch bending going on. We have some samples in here with uh, little sounds and snippets of sonic representations of things. I don't know what most of them are, and a lot of them honestly caught me off guard and had me chuckling as they just sounded so strange within the metal. Um, you know, we listen to a lot of metalcore these days that's that's fusing uh, the metallic side of things with an electronic side and a poppy side, but for some reason the specific sounds in here, the samples they chose to use, felt unique to me in the metal context. I don't know if that's just a me. I don't know if I just haven't listened to enough modern metalcore and, and alternative metal to hear these sounds in them. But like I said, got it caught me off guard. Had me chuckling a couple of times. It feels like a hip hop producer given this, this metal riff and saying, hey, make a song out of this. <laughs> um, including towards the end of the song, you know, we even got the kind of stereotypical hip-hop hi-hats going on there that uh, I actually really enjoyed. I thought that was a cool way to change things up. Um, but when we look at what the drum's doing, when we look at all of these other synthesized and electronic sounds, the samples, the song continues to evolve. It feels like we never rehash entirely a section. The two verses sound very different. The two choruses sound very different. And everything after that second chorus felt linear to me. I don't know. I don't feel like I, we, we came back to a verse or a chorus at the end of the song. If we did, Musically, it was totally new because I wasn't finding any callbacks, anything I had heard before. Aside from, you know, the guitar work, which is pretty similar throughout. So it's tough to call that a callback when we never left to call it back. Uh, <laughs> but I, I do enjoy the variety that we get from the electronic side, and I think it does keep it fresh enough. You may have found that I was a bit more enthusiastic with my body movement at the beginning of the song than at the end. And, and this is why. Uh, the guitar work is fine for a foundation, and I did generally enjoy the changing of the ornamental ideas, but there just wasn't enough newness to, to catch me. And of course, I could be just totally looking at this wrong. Again, as I always do with hip-hop music, because I focus on instruments, and hip-hop typically doesn't. I think this does have a bit more movement than your average hip-hop track does, but it's still a bit on the minimal side of new things happening with what the instruments are doing. So, you know, it could just be, as usual, I'm just not the right audience for this, even though it did catch my ear at the beginning. Now, as with most hip-hop and uh, wrapped segments of anything, a lot of the focus is going to be on the vocals. And I really dug this. I mean, I've expressed this before. I have a massive love for the art of rap. Just being able to move your speaking muscles <laughs> at this speed with the articulation and precision that's necessary to come across uh, clean and understandable is 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 wild i don't speak italian but i could hear words and syllables in this it, it was fast but it wasn't a muddy mess um and when you include the ways that 
they can change up and shift their emphasis patterns to create different flows and rhythmic ideas. It just ends up being a very cool spectacle for me. And what I think worked well was the way that the vocals tend to work against and even within the space that the guitars presented, right? So we have shifting rhythms in the guitar work that's going to create areas where the vocals can emphasize or work around as they work within their own rhythms. And I love the way that we had this rhythmic counterpoint in a sense. I wouldn't really call it polyrhythm. Um, I, I tend to view that more in, in rhythmic terms, um, like drum patterns, right? Um, whereas this feels a bit more linear. And linearity reminds me of melody, and so a rhythmic counterpoint just feels like a more proper term to me than polyrhythm in this sense. Maybe that doesn't make sense to anyone else, but it does to me. Uh, so I, I, I really appreciate that. It was one of the first things that stood out to me was the rhythmic ways that we had this guitar rhythm and then the vocal rhythm and how they were complementing each other in a variety of ways. And that was fairly consistent throughout the entire track. One of the cool things that I mentioned was the guitars always changing up their rhythms, how much space they were taking up, um, you know, whether they were holding notes out or playing syncopated ideas. And this tended to work well with the vocal flow. And we continue to hear a variety of this, this rhythmic collaboration between the instruments and the vocalists throughout this entire track. That is definitely a highlight for me. Speaking of collaboration between these two, space. Space is used so cool here where, I mean, even right there at the end, I was pointing at how they were creating these pockets of uh, like vacuums where once we had a note being held out by the guitar, just this massive tone, and then they cut out for a beat or two and you really just get the vocals. And I think like the hi-hat was going there at the time and it sounds so tiny. And then the guitar punches back in and it like, boom, fills that space back up. I love the use of space throughout here, man. Uh, there, there's times when the vocals are just cut and got this constant fast flow going on and it kind of turns into a, a sort of a background noise for me, just a, a consistency of like constant eighth notes or something just laying down this fast flow. But then the guitar is cut out entirely and sonically you're just forced to focus on the vocals at that point and I'm like, dang. This guy's precise, he's articulating well, there's strong enunciation here, and then the guitars punch back in. And just creating that space forces me to refocus on things that I might have begun to let drift into the background that weren't supposed to. <laughs> the vocals are definitely the highlight of a song like this, and the song reminds me of that from time to time, but it's not even just that. It's also, the, the shifting spotlight allows the song to feel more dynamic. Instead of having a constant intensity, there's these peaks and valleys as instruments come in and leave as a note is held out and then the instrument rests for a beat or two to create these, these points of maximum impact. It is very evocative. It works, I don't know if evocative is the right word, I don't know why I said that. It works exceptionally well at dragging me into the song of keeping in with the rhythm and the atmosphere of it any time that my mind might have wanted to drift, which I don't think it did in this track. It is on the shorter side, but you know, even if my mind wanted to, something new is happening, whether the guitars are changing things up or the, the atmosphere of the song is shifting from something feeling small to large or any of these vacuum points. It's just... There's always something cool happening, a new ornamental idea popping in. And it allows the song to ever reach a point of, I think, just total stagnation, of boredom across the board. As I mentioned, you know, I, I got less enthusiastic uh, of it in the final minute or so, but that's not to say that I was completely turned off by it there's still so much to dig into so much that kept my attention but uh it was just you know a lot of repetition of ideas and and a focus on variation of them which i think in any other context would have worked fine something about the way it's delivered here i don't know maybe it is just the consistency of the guitars and my hyper focus on instruments 
that had my attention waning just a hair bit. Uh, maybe if I had lyrics pulled up, maybe if I understood Italian even, yeah, or you know, vice versa, if it was in English. So you know, if, if it was a different band who did the same style in English, I might have kept my attention a little bit more as I had something to focus on about what's in focus most of the time, you know, the, the vocals. But uh, yeah, I'm going to find some lyrics for this since, you know, is a rapped song it tends to be a lot of focus on that i'm expecting a lot of words though because there's a lot in here and uh, i'm actually really curious if i get i won't have any way of knowing will i if the lyrics are going to notate what was said at the beginning before the song started proper you know when we just had the drone and the spoken word anyways let me go read some lyrics all right so this is, uh, this is interesting because it's a fictional diss track. Uh, it is about uh, Filippo Argenti from the Divine Comedy. And it seems to be about how he, how much he hates Dante. Um, he, he calls him out for not being a good poet. Um, he, he talks about some of the things that happened in the story of the Divine Comedy. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I, I don't get a lot of it, to be honest. I haven't read the Divine Comedy since high school. We're talking like two decades now, dude. It's, uh. A lot of this is going right over my head as far as direct references, but that seems to be what it's about. What I find really interesting, though, is, because uh, here's the other thing, too, is that it's being translated from Italian to English, and so I'm also probably missing out on some context there, so I'm, I'm not too... Uh, on the, on the up-and-up regarding the source material, and it's probably losing some really cool stuff in translation as well. But I was lucky enough, there's a lot of this is uh, annotated. Um, if you're really interested in digging into this, if it sounds like a cool concept, I highly suggest uh, reading all of these stanzas, reading all of the um, an uh, annotations. Um, the, so some people put a lot of work into kind of notating where all of this picks up from... Um, the Divine Comedy. There's one cool thing in here in the chorus. He says, Your triplets are a rag card, and my five on your face leave their mark. Now, again, I don't know how good of a translation this is from uh, Italian, but what's really cool is we have the ideas of the triplet and the five. And at least in Italian, this is a series of it's three groups of five syllables. Uh, and so it creates this, this idea calling into the poetic meter of the Divine Comedy and saying that my, I'm better. I'm going to one-up it and then introducing this new rhythmic element in the music and the flow as well. Very cool stuff. Um, and, I mean, that's honestly just the tip of the iceberg. From what I can see, there is some very smart writing in here. Uh, most of it about the Divine Comedy itself, but it seems that there are some things that call about uh, the actual poetry and the ways that this rapping vocals are delivered from a poetic uh, sense, as well, a meter and rhyme and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, it's 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 wild. I really wish I, I understood Italian in a, in a better way. In, in any way, I suppose, <laughs> so that I could, you know, get most of this. I, I really don't think the translation is doing it justice. And, I mean, here's the other thing, too, is a lot of the annotations are in Italian as well. So, not everything in them is even being um, translated for me. There's quite a few words where it just copies the Italian word and I kind of have to guess from context. So... It does seem to be, though, very, very well entrenched 
in the source material has a strong understanding of it and is talking about it pretty intelligently. And like I said, I, I wish I could just understand it better. Those are my thoughts on, uh, who is this? Oh yeah, Caparet says, Argenti Vive. Let me know what you think of this song. If there's anything that stood out to you, anything you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on, maybe just give your own thoughts, opinions, perspectives, uh, interpretations on it, you know, whatever you want. Throw all that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you can find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. That wraps it up for this one. I'll be back tomorrow, though, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC, as usual. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to. And have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos. Thank you.